Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz, how are you? Hey. And what is today? Wednesday afternoon and day something another of the coronavirus <laughs> pandemic, this unprecedented event. I'll just go ahead and oh, get Oh, wow. So, you know, we've been on for 20 seconds. So I guess that's a record, maybe. I got pretty impressed right there, Tom. That, that was pretty impressive. Hey, Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> Ah, hello. Okay, we have some new people on the on the Facebook Live here. It looks like today too. So uh, we we had uh, a, a couple of uh, pretty cool uh, Facebook Lives over the last couple of days. We had Joe Walsh on Monday, and he was uh, telling us about some of the correspondence and discussions he had with the offices of his uh, of, the, of the U.S. senators from his state of Maine and how they're. Uh, working with like Marco Rubio and some other senators on extending the eight-week period for PPP uh, spending to 16 weeks. Still hasn't uh, become law yet. I don't even know if they've put forth a formal bill yet. I haven't seen, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, that have it on good authority that we're going to see uh, that happen and actually become law before before early June. I guess that first week of June is when some people's PPP funds run out and um, they want to get that in place before, before that happens. It's not that our funds run out, but their eight week period is over. And that kind of turns upside down a lot of the different logic of, you know, how to, how to manage the PPP funds. So that's something we want to keep an eye on. And uh, we had Megan likes on yesterday and, um, Megan is awesome. I mean, she's a wealth of knowledge about uh, all these SBA programs and just uh, counting and numbers in, in general. That was a lot of fun. If uh, you missed either one of those, you might want to go back and, 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 and take a look. There's a whole lot there to be learned. And we were on such a roll yesterday that we kind of got swamped with questions and <laughs> we <laughs> did our best to keep oh. up with them. But um, there were there were questions. I know there were questions that went unanswered. And if uh, we want to put any of those uh, out there today, we'll swing back around to it and do our best to make sure that we get everybody's questions answered. Yeah. Um, so I know there were quite a few of them. I am really sorry, you guys. I was trying, but you saw, right? You guys saw how there was just too much information. Nobody was talking slowly yesterday on that Facebook Live. There was no wasted time or space. So, ah, oh, it was it was just tough. Um, Tom, I'm, I'm trying to pull up some of these questions from yesterday if you're wondering why I'm just like playing it with my phone on a Facebook Live. <laughs> I thought you were playing Candy Crush or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I normally do when we're on these calls. <laughs> Or on these Facebook lives. All right. I'm trying to pull up some. Um, anybody, so anybody have any questions right now about what's going on, what's new? Um, if not, what are you guys all doing coming back? Oh, sorry. Where's that little thing? It's gone. Hey, Starlene. Good to see you. Trying to find my page here. I can go ahead and share something that we discussed earlier this week. Um, we were talking about various calculators to manage the PPP uh, loan program. Yeah. And this one uh, Joe mentioned on Monday, and we've been using that here as, as, as well. And it's a really good, it's a really good calculator. I've given, um, Kyle, several options, and this seems to be his go-to one. And they just recently updated it on the 18th uh, after the release of uh, some of the guidance that came out over the weekend. So I'll take this link, and I'll put this on the uh, resource page of uh, Cleaning Business Today. But uh, if you click hey, on... Maybe pull that up too, Tom. I can try. There's a download here somewhere, I promise you. I've done it. Oh, here you go. 
Oh. Here you go. So it's got your schedule A in it. This looks a little bit more like the uh, the, the form from the SBA, doesn't it? Yeah. Which that was um, what was it, Megan or I can't remember now, Joe. Joe. Well, yeah. This was this is these guys. This 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 firm. I think they're out of Massachusetts. We've been using their calculator for several weeks. But this is new. The calculator that was out there before the 18th looked completely different. And look, this says it was updated as recently as today. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, Joe did say that this one is linked up to work with uh, uh, what is Schedule A that, yep. that we have to fill in. So that, that was, you know, what convinced me that this is a, a, a great one to be using. We've got the uh, Schedule A right here on a tab. Nice. And look at it. It really does look very, very similar to the calculator, doesn't it? So, you know, maybe in a, in a subsequent Facebook Live, not today because I need to spend a little time with this myself, but, you know, maybe we could spend more time in this and do a deep dive and, uh, you know, this is this is completely different. This is uh, a new deal from what was out there last week. Yeah. But uh, if you want to download it, I just put the uh, link there in the chat. I do feel like every time we turn around, we're as you know, I I shouldn't say that. Every time we turned around, everything was changing for a while, for weeks, and then we kind of had a little lull, like three weeks and. Not much happened, you know, not a lot of changes. People were getting their PPP, people were getting their idle monies, and not much was really changing. And then, bam, again, Friday, right? <laughs> Friday hit, and then we got more info on Saturday, got a little bit more info on Monday. Here we are Wednesday. I haven't seen anything new since Monday, but I actually haven't been looking either. So I, I feel like we, here we are again being just battened around uh, more stuff happening and more, more changes. Well, one piece of information that, that Megan shared yesterday that, you know, I, I, I was oblivious to is the prospect of more idle funds showing up. And, you know, if you're entitled and, and, and many of us who've been getting idle funds here recently, we're really kind of taking a haircut. We were entitled to more, but they're kind of capping it at 150. That the belief is if you can go back for more. Now, if you've already signed your agreement and gotten funds, how you do that is 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 a little uh little questionable. We don't don't, you know, goes in that category. We don't know how that would work, but technically we should should be able to request more funds. But it was Megan's uh, advice that if you can afford to to hold out, even if you've gotten your portal, kind of slow walk that, and you've got like thirty days to log into your portal. So, you know, don't wait till day thirty, but you can wait a couple of weeks before you even log in. And after you do that, I think she said you've got another sixty days once you're into your portal until you have to actually execute the agreement, sign the contract. So, oh, slow walk that with the whole that more idle funds become available, in which case you can go back and say, no, nah, this 150 is not going to cut it. I need, I need more. Yeah. I, I thought that was a great idea. Too late for me, but um, you know, I've already signed everything and done, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was, I was on that in five minutes. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 read, I'll read the contract later. <laughs> totally what I did. Uh, but you know, another side of that is, um, our HR expert that we've been working with has told us that um, there's an opportunity if you have any reason why you think you might be entitled to more PP money, you can go back and ask for that. And I know at least one person that has already accepted their PPP, been spending it for two weeks now, and is going in and saying, hey, um, I didn't, I just was in a hurry. This thing came out so fast. I signed it. I did the, I did everything, but I just pushed it through as fast as I could. I didn't, I didn't even pay attention to some of the details. 
and his bank is shoving through another uh, PPP for him for the second, uh, his K-1. He's like, I didn't know that I could um, claim my K-1 on there. I didn't know that I, well, he had another thing too. There was something else. Anyway, it looks like he's going to get, you know, another 60 grand or so. It's interesting. Take, take a look at that. Yeah. Um, and I know that we've had some discussions over the last couple, you know, last, last number of weeks about the, the opportunities to, to acquire accounts from competitors. So I wonder if you did that, if you could go back and say, hey, you know, I have the opportunity to hire twice as many people as I had before because I, you know, bought a competitor but I can't do it without more PPP money. Yeah. If you can make an argument that you're creating jobs and I'm, I'm making this up, I don't know if they would, you know, what yeah. type of documentation they would need, but that would be an argument. That would be a discussion worth having. I would think. Absolutely. I hadn't even thought of that, but I, I bet that's going to get you a little bit. My thinking is if they're going to do it for one person, they're going to do it for more people, right? There's an opportunity out there. And it sounds like when he first, went to his bank, they were like, what? No, the PPP, no, uh -uh, that's not the way it works. And when he explained his side, they were like, oh, okay, yeah. Let me see what I can do. Let me get you another application and let's let's work that out. So I'm just thinking that that opens up a whole a whole world of- In his case, he, he already had funds dispersed. So they already yeah. put PPP money in his bank account. Yeah. And his thing was he was going to run out. He was going to run out on like the seventh week, I think he said. He might have said six week. Anyway, he was going to run out. I'm assuming his eight week window is all still that that, that didn't still change. in it. Yeah. yeah. No, it didn't change. He's still in it. No. Um, the idea of going from eight weeks to sixteen weeks and the ability to kind of shift that window around a little bit and. We had some discussions yesterday where, where Megan thinks, and Joe mentioned this on, on Monday as well, that it's not out of uh, the question that we might be able to get more PPP funds as part of, you know, extending the, the, the time period they're going to be giving us, or we, we, we hope they're going to be giving us to, to, to spend those funds. Yeah. Well, and I was looking over it again after talking with Megan yesterday, and it looks like even though our funds are, you know, actually it's an eight week coverage, right? Um, it actually can be up to 10 weeks the way it's written because it's written um, in and not or. It says that you can collect the money on the or pay the money on the front side. So uh, the example we we're using like is if you got your money deposited on, on April 30th, then payday is on May 1st. If you pay on May 1st, that is the, um, it's when the, the monies were, the, the debt was incurred, when, when you, um, the, the people earned the money, right? It's not actually when you got the money. It's kind of like it's cash not, basis versus a accrual base account. Yeah. They're letting you right. take whatever you want to use. No, the way it's saying, though, I read it again, it says that you can do this and you can do this on the other end. So on May 1st, you can pay for um, out, uh, the hours that have already been accrued. And on the back side, you can move your pay up to account for. So in essence, you're making your eight week window bigger than eight weeks. Ten weeks, which yeah. is what which is what our HR person was saying is conceivably right now they're telling you it's an eight week window, but it could conceivably be 10 weeks of payroll. So of payroll funds. I'm like, wow. Okay. But that's why some people are also running out a little bit early too. So when, we had <laughs> that, when we had that discussion a few weeks ago, the guidance or at least the, 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 the pervasive thought was, it works the same way as the Internal Revenue Service treats your income, like on a cash, most of it's a cash basis. And yeah. You get your funds on Wednesday. If your first payroll is two days after that, then tough luck. That's one of your, you know, eight week payrolls, even though that work was done prior to even you know, getting the money. Yeah. 
So uh, and, and Megan was saying the same thing. Ja, remember, she was yeah. saying, just pick one, whichever one you're going to use, pick that. And so you'll either get it on the front or you'll get it on the back. You'll get one one of the, the two, right one or the other. But the way it's actually written doesn't mean anything. The way it's written, right? And tomorrow it could be written differently. But the way it's written today is you can do this and you can do this. So, so. I, I guess the question is, what do you have to lose by putting forth the 10 week and the bank says, no, we really can't do it that way. Well, you know, well. Okay. Whatever all they're, all they're going to say is they're not saying that we can't do anything. All they're saying is that part's not forgiven. We're only going to forgive this amount. Well, you still had to pay it one way or the other. So if it was still legitimate hours that you were paying for, it wasn't something that you were, you know, people sitting at home and you're paying them. But if it was money revenue coming in to cover that, you've lost nothing by reporting that. Megan made a really good point, though, and, 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 and this comes from an informed perspective because she's been working with banks. She's actually volunteering yeah. her time training uh, yeah. people in the banks on on, on how these programs work. How are they going to do it? But more than likely, you're going to be working with an administrative assistant that doesn't anything understand anything about a payroll or a small business or any of this. So the simpler you can make it and keep it, the easier it's going to be to, to, to get through that process. So, you know, it's but kind that's of what actually made me go back and read it, Tom, because Megan said that Megan said, we're going to be working with an administrative assistant who doesn't know anything about payroll has never owned a business, et cetera. And they're just being trained what to look for on this form. And what they're going to be looking for is that eight week date. And the, the way it's written currently is it's those Pay dates, the days that you pay. So you can pay monies that have not that that were earned outside of the eight week, and you can pay early. Uh, you don't have to have that week flex or whatever on the on the other. Now you can't pay you can't pay in advance. So on the on the back side, you can't pay on June thirtieth for monies that they're going to earn in July. You can't do that. But if if June 30 is the last day of your 56 day window. And this is the other thing that, that Megan said, think of in terms of days rather than eight weeks. So what eight times seven is 56, 56 days. Yeah. And if somebody worked on day 56, you can pay them for that right there that day. Yeah. Yep. On that day. And then we were talking about the 56 days because it, I think it was making it a lot easier for people that got funded on Saturdays and Sundays because they were starting their money on Monday. No, 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 no. It's the 56 days, which is super helpful. It's if you got if you got funded on a Monday, nobody's having trouble with that math, right? <laughs> it's eight weeks <laughs> and easy. But people that got funded like on Saturdays and Sundays is kind of messed up. There, there was another change that I really, oh, I know. The other change was around the 1923, the $1,900.23 that people were assuming that they could automatically pay themselves each week. And, you know, Megan explained that math is not, it's not 1923. Everybody was doing that on a $100,000 um, year max right yeah, but they're not doing it that way they're doing it on your 2019 numbers so that's a completely different number for a lot of people out there for most of the people that i know anyway it's a much yeah, you can't you number. can't necessarily give yourself a big raise for this eight week period no you can't uh oh i think they megan didn't megan say no more than 25 percent right yeah yeah, to be safe, no more than twenty five percent. But in my mind, that kind of falls under if you're paying yourself, and if the bank says no, we're not going to be able to give you all of that. I guess the question is, would they at least give you what you know you made in twenty nineteen? In which case, you really aren't any worse off anyway because you're paying yourself. 
And it's just your own money. If, if you want to give it back, you don't want to keep that as a 1% loan. Well, then just give it back. Right? So that, that doesn't really hurt you. It's just you're not going to get as much forgiven. But again, it's like you're not going to get as much free money. You're just going to get some free money. Just a lot. You're just going to get a lot of free money. That's all. <laughs> it's, funny how, it's funny how the mind works. You know, the whole, you know, aversion to loss. And oh, my gosh. I didn't get as much free money as I thought I was getting. <laughs> so now I'm so disappointed. <laughs> And it's funny because uh, you find yourself thinking that even while you're reminding yourself, yeah, but it's free money. I know, but so it's just an odd thing. Hey, Linda, good to see you. What's up with you today? We don't have very many people on the on the Facebook Live today. Not yet. I think people were uh, worn out with all the information that Megan gave them yesterday. Were, were you going? Were you going to? Be able to send me uh, a link to a video. Uh, 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 no, no, you're not. So uh, she is not wanting to announce until tomorrow when she gets it on her website. Got you. Well, come back tomorrow. We got something pretty cool to share with you, but we can't tell yeah. you about it now because it's secret. Hey, Leslie. Yeah, we got a, we got a secret cool thing though that happened uh, to somebody somebody in my MMA group and uh, yeah, she's going to share tomorrow, which will be really, really fun. Hey, Greg. Oh, Allison, a lot of people here, I guess. Well, we just can't see you guys if you don't comment. Hey, Elena. Oh, we had to suffer for that free money. Yeah. I'll give you that Elena. Yeah. It, it wasn't just uh, easy. For, it wasn't falling from the sky, like manna from heaven. Right. We did have to work a little bit for it, but uh, I'm up for a little bit of, you know, I, I'm surprised at how hard I'll work for free money. Well, yeah, in, in a relative sense, though, I think most of us have worked a lot harder and had less to show for it. That's the truth, too, Tom. That is absolutely the truth. You know, I was thinking yeah. about some of the some like projects we've done over the years, and like the lack of sleep, and just all of the you know, I mean, just you know, the heavy lifts, and at the end of it, you know, we wound up making you know what seemed to be good money and it was good money it is good money but in a relative sense it's like wow we're cleaning it home. wasn't free huh? it really wasn't free money <laughs> no we were very hard for that but now we're we're, we're we're cleaning homes with relatively no cost of goods sold for the next few weeks that's uh in a relative sense that is easy money isn't it leslie's wanting to know where molly is again huh yeah, and Megan didn't like us saying free. She wanted to remind us that we're still paying the taxes on that money too. So it's not 100% free. Don't get sucked into that that thinking. Okay, Megan, I took that to heart as well. So she shared a lot on that Facebook Live yesterday. My brain was like, oh, okay, I got to absorb everything. Is Molly at home? Yeah, Molly was here earlier. Janice was here. We were uh, finishing up some of the the, the last parts for um, the, the PHC Professional House Cleaner uh, program, and uh, we were shooting some video. And we had Molly here, but Janice left and, and took her with her. Yay for both of them, right? Yeah. Get a break. It's so hard on little girl when you guys are busy. She got what? under the wheel of my chair yesterday. Oh. Nothing major. She lost it. You know how I knew there was a little clump of hair on the floor oh. afterwards. But she didn't yelp. Probably, but she yelps all the time for various reasons, like when I'm trying to sleep at night. Oh yeah. She's in her crate. Well, Leslie, don't worry. It sounds like she didn't get hurt too bad. Oh, like, she's oh. fine. She's fine. She, she didn't get hurt at all. She's not limping or anything. <laughs> Puppies are resilient. And you know how they like get under your feet? And it's like, you know, we're going to step on her a few times yeah. before she gets kind of yeah, goes around, around with your feet when you're trying not to fall. Ah, I feel so bad. Luckily, she's a little bit bigger, so it's not as hard, I think. She's more in your, it's when they're tinier, it's even worse. Oh, goodness. So, uh, so what else? What else are you guys doing? Anybody get any monies 
I know somebody that just got their idle money today. Anybody here on the Facebook Live get any idle money or PPP funds? Anybody? I'm looking forward to that. Hearing about it. Everybody already uh, has them. Yeah, everybody's all got their money. They're all spending it. They're all doing all their fun stuff already. Uh, well, you guys, we can always shut down the Facebook Live early today if nobody has any questions or anything. We thought you guys would have a lot of questions we after were, Megan yesterday because we, we were didn't. drowning in them yesterday. Where, where I know. Did you know? we weren't able to answer them all. Um, okay, Greg says, is it better to spend more than the PPP loan and submit all of these approved expenses to ensure 100% is forgiven? Well, I mean, if you're spending monies on things that you would normally be spending money on anyway, what do you have to lose? But say, this is the money that I spent over that period of time. And I think that it all meets the criteria. And if you get in some negotiation with that administrative assistant from the bank that um, Megan was telling us about yesterday, then, you know, maybe maybe some of it gets negotiated away. What I'd be careful about, though, is spending money that you normally wouldn't be spending, thinking that it's PPP money that's going to be forgiven and one being wrong. That would that would be unfortunate. Because it would be really sad to not get the benefit of the PPP money, right? And just sort of end up back in the same place. That would be sad. Wouldn't be the worst case scenario, but it, it wouldn't be the happiest of times either. No. Um, Tom, Debbie wants to know, why why should we apply for the IDOL? What, why? If you don't need the money or... Is there, is there a reason to do it? She's already got her PPP. Well, at the moment, unless you're doing something in agriculture, I don't think that you can apply for it if you haven't already. But the thinking is that there'll be some more funds out there. That was what uh, Megan was sharing with us, in which case we can all jump back in again. Even if you got your monies, if you didn't get all of them, you could, could, could request more. And I guess, I guess, my answer to that is, you know, we don't know what we don't know yet. And it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And it's really cheap money and it's meant to be a bridge loan. You pay it back over 30 years. You can pay it all back at one time if you want, but it's 3.75% interest. I don't think interest or first payment even comes up till what the first year year which is what i was going to say debbie is it is literally free to hold on to for a year there is no there's nothing so just for a security blanket that that's that's the main reason why i want to really have that that money i i just really like having that cushion like tom said it is a what kind of an event y'all unprecedented right we don't know I mean, we all kind of feel like, okay, things are things are cleaning up. They're opening up again. Everything's looking good, but we don't know. We don't know where this is going to take us. And the the financial stability of the country is funky to y'all. Yeah. It's just there's a lot of money going out in ways that it has never gone out before. Even the experts don't know, you know, how, how, how am I going to know what's going to be happening in a year? How is Tom going to know? How are you going to know, Debbie? That's why we're, I'm recommending, and take the money uh, and be safe. And there's an aversion to, or, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of things said and written about debt. And, you know, the whole idea being, you know, debt free is, is, from a personal standpoint, from a personal, you know, how you spend your personal money and how you lead your personal life, certainly you don't want to be spending beyond your means. You don't want to be using credit cards to finance in, you know, recreational activities and discretionary whatever that you really can't afford. And in my mind, that's really at the heart of, you know, being, being debt free is about from a business perspective, you know, most 
large businesses, publicly traded companies, all of them, not almost all of them, even companies that you know have more money they know what to do with, still go out and borrow money on top of it just because they can at, at really low interest rates. And it gives them even that much more of a buffer security blanket, if you will. And what's happening here with this unprecedented event is not because we were bad managers, not because we were spending more money than we were making and making, you know, bad business decisions. This is, this is a natural disaster. And this is what the SBA, you know, they're, they're treating it. That's what, you know, economic, uh, what's EIDL stand for? Economic uh, injury, disaster loan, economic injury, disaster loan. Think about that disaster. This is no different than, you know, a hurricane or a flood or, you know, you, we, you know, most of us were doing everything right the way we were supposed to. And bam, this, uh, you know, disaster hit us. So that's that's a very valid reason for, for, for taking out a loan, especially one that you can pay back over 30 years because, you know, if your business qualified for that idle loan, you've, you, you should have more than enough free cash flow to pay that off a little bit at a time over the next 30 years. Plus, we're not personally guaranteeing it. So worst case scenario, a year from now, you kind of get to the point and it's like, you know, this business isn't working. I'm going to have to shut it down. And then, you know, I don't, I don't think any of us are personally on the hook for that. Am, am I correct in my thinking? Yeah, that's what everybody's saying. That's what we're hearing, Tom. So I would talk, to your, I would talk to your accountant about that again to, 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 to make, understand, you know, 100% sure, but. And, uh, and really, even that doesn't matter. It might not be written yet. It's not written in stone, right? What what's what's out there right now is changing. We know it's changing within the next two weeks, for sure. So knowing that, okay, you make make decisions based on that. But another thing that I wanted to say, Debbie, is even if you don't want to have any debt at all, it might be a smart move to have that money sitting in the bank just because you don't know what's going to happen, hopefully in a year, in one year, you'll have a better sense of what's going to happen. If in a year you determine, yeah, you know what? I really didn't need this money. Return it. Mm -hmm. You just return the money. And there's no penalty. Right? That's what I heard. No penalty. Uh, Elaine so is asking the, Elaine is asking the question about, you know, does interest start accruing from day one, even though you're not making your first payment for, for a year? A lot of uh, notes work that way that you might not need to, you might not be asked to make a payment until X number of months in the future, but interest starts accruing at the beginning. Um, Elena, I guess we can share what, uh, what we learned yesterday, what um, Megan shared with us. She said that the interest, at least I thought I heard her say that the interest doesn't even start accruing until the end of, of year one. She said 11 months. Right. Megan said 11 months. So, I mean, to me, that just seems like it really is just a little pillow that you have in your account. If you don't touch it, there's, I can't see even one reason not to, not to apply for it uh, and hold on to it at least for those 11 months. <laughs> I mean, at a minimum, those 11 months. Uh, okay, so we do have some questions here, too. Uh, Tom, Linda wants to know, was it determined yes or no on workers comp being part of the PPP forgiveness? We saw more than, than one article. I think we posted, we actually posted one in the uh, cleaning business today, uh, resources that specifically said, I think it was from, from cabbage and their rules. And they said workers comp. No, it's not part of, you know, it, it cannot be treated as PPP funds. That being said, you know, I don't know what's in this spreadsheet that we just looked at and we don't know what changes might be coming when they go from, you know, assuming they go from an eight week window to a 16 week window. The or other 12. part. I've yeah. heard 12 window too. So. So. And it's not going to change your business thinking. You're not going to not hire somebody or not give somebody hours because of the workers comp component anyway. So that kind of falls under the category of, I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead and try to clean as many houses as we can and use the money the way, you know, 
pay people and the way that we normally would. And at the end of whatever number of weeks that we have, we'll sit down with, 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 with a bank or an administrative system or somebody, I don't know. And we'll, we'll figure that part out. And fill out our form and that it, it will be what it is. It's not that you're not going to be spending that money anyway. So it's just whether or not it gets forgiven. So it's kind of a, a non-issue. It just doesn't matter one way or the other. All right. So Leslie has a weird one, Tom. She has an employee that turned down work and training. So Leslie assumed that she quit. Now the employee says she is scared and she felt like she was forced to quit. So is she going to get any flack for this? Like, I'm not sure what you mean by flack, Leslie. Um, what I would say on this one is, good news is, uh, she is, you've got it in writing that she quit regardless of if she felt forced to quit or not. She said she was scared and that she quit. So it's not going to impact your number, which is good, right? Your FTE number. And then as far as uh, getting flack, I, I'm guessing that you mean unemployment flack. So if you're thinking unemployment flack, um, it doesn't sound like any of us are going to be getting any kind of unemployment flat for a while. I mean, we're all going to big picture, all going to end up taking the brunt for it, but individual companies don't sound like they're going to be. Is that how you're reading what you're saying too, Tom? Could be, I guess, you know, another dimension of flat could be some type of EEOC claim that, you know, she was coerced and forced out i'm sure that wasn't the case but that doesn't prevent people from claiming whatever they want to claim i would take you know all the documentation in terms of any correspondence that she's sent you and make sure that's in a safe place and write your own notes in terms of how it went down she wants to stay on unemployment denies quitting just doesn't want to work i guess as a state by state thing the federal law says if you know being afraid is not a reason not yeah. to work but there's some states, I think Texas is as employer friendly as Texas is. I think at least somewhere on one of these calls, we somebody mentioned that Texas um, will allow you to continue to take your, your unemployment if you claim your that you're. State, yeah. So I would check in this, you know, I, I guess, you know, we'd check and see what how California rules on that. that if kind you of, even need to, because it, it's not really your business. Once she's already quit, how's that going to come back on Leslie? Um, I guess it's a matter of if she's still drawing unemployment at some point. Will that come back on her loss run? And will Leslie be paying? Not supposed to. They're is saying that no. Fact, is that across the country or is that state by state? Yeah, no, that, that's across the country. It's not supposed to. So, it's not supposed to be able to. Okay, so we'll all be playing a whole lot more for unemployment insurance, but right. it's all in one big pool. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, things, any one individual. That's right. Your company isn't going to be penalized more because your employees did something worse than this other company. We're all going to be like raised together. The, 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 the big thing, if we offer somebody their job and if they don't accept it for, for whatever reason, if you can get some type of, confirmation from them in writing that they're not going to be returning that you know you they're not going to be accepting your offer that's ideal at the very least send them some correspondence asking them to respond within some amount of time and you can put that in the file just showing that you know this is what i did and they never responded so you i it I, sounds like she did respond she said she's not coming back she was yeah, scared in this, case, in this case that's uh that's ideal Win. Yeah, a win. All right, we got a question here from Beatriz. This was my question yesterday. She is an LLC self-employed. She received four weeks of unemployment insurance retroactively for April. She didn't make any money. On, on May 6th, on May 6th is when she got it. The next day, she received her PPP money. She claimed the PPP immediately on her weekly UI report. I'm back at work now. What do I do with the PPP money? I'm afraid to touch it. Manage instantly send this as a, I'm not understanding that last line. But other than that, I think this is kind of straightforward. Your unemployment money, you got paid for the period of time that you were unemployed. 
Now you're done with that. Hopefully you're off of unemployment. If that's what I'm reading here, you're off of unemployment now. And now your PPP will kick in. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's pretty straightforward here that it's, you're probably just nervous, Beatrice, because you're like, I don't want to double dip. Just don't. So make sure that you're off of your unemployment. Make sure that you know your dates and then pay yourself through your PPP. Yeah, you don't, yeah, want, you don't want to be taking unemployment while you're giving yourself a paycheck at the same time. That's yeah. that, that, that that's, could get you in trouble. That's that. Yeah, that's the double dipping that we're talking about. Don't do that. So just make sure that your unemployment is canceled and that you're done. And then the next day you can start giving yourself pay through your company again. Your PPP will, will cover that. All right, Amber, my EDA, my, oh, my idol is pending approval. Yay! Good job, Amber. I'm excited for you. Uh, Debbie, oh, look at this. Debbie says the SBA asked her if she wanted to. She was the one asking, why should I tell me? Why should I apply for an idol? The SBA asked you? Did they reach out to you, Debbie, and ask you if you wanted to apply? I would be I would be careful about that because I'm in oh, the scams, huh, Tom? You know, yeah, I would. You know, unless you'd had some previous correspondence or some discussions, and you knew for sure who you were dealing with, that you know, especially if they're saying all you need to do is give me, you know, your bank account information and a few other, you know, piece of confidential thing, and we'll put money in your bank. I don't know. I that that might might not be legit. You know what I did, Debbie? I and I, I didn't do this. I, it came to me uh, an article: the top ten COVID nineteen scams, and I think something along those lines was one of them. SBA reaching out to you and asking you. I totally forgot about it already. <laughs> I mm -hmm. hope they don't try to get me. <laughs> Apparently, I'm a mark. <laughs> so, but you might you might do a search on that. You know top 10 uh, COVID-19 scams. I that, that was an article. Hey, Denise, good to see you. Okay, Greg's got a question here, Tom. Rosemary got her unemployment check deposited yesterday, although today she got an email from the state saying that her social security number, name, and address were available on their website for a while and that we might want to lock down our credit. I temporarily removed freezes with the three agencies to allow the SBA to look at my information for the idle loan. Thank you, Ohio, for making our life more difficult. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's so. Hmm. You know, that type of stuff happens. I mean, it's, unfortunately, that's, that's not in, in, in common. You know, yeah, banks kind of a get compromised. You know, companies get com. I mean, it's just. You know, people have our people have our personal information that shouldn't have it. That's pretty much a, a done deal. I do I do freeze my um, credit reports, and that's an aggravation too, especially now because I froze them. I had to unfreeze them for the 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 SBA loans, and some of it got tangled up, and they said they were still frozen, and I don't know. And I got it unfrozen, and then we went around and around and around. Eventually got it worked out, but it, it, it's an aggravation. But I'm kind of paranoid when it comes to stuff like that. I'm more paranoid since I met Tom, but no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Elena wants to know, owner compensation is part of PPP forgiveness, correct? Okay, you made, you talked about that earlier, Liz. We learned about yeah, that today. But Megan gave us a little bit of more information. What did she say? She gave us something new yesterday, didn't she? It, I, I guess it, um, it was talking about historically how much you were making. And when we go back to 2019 and, and look at what your, your, your compensation was, you can't, you know, if you typically you're paying your, yourself, you know, 50000 a year, you can't give yourself a 100% raise for this eight-week period. Can't take yourself up to the, so we're, we've we heard a lot about that $100,000 cap, right? But you can't take yourself up to that $100,000 cap if you weren't making 75 grand before. She said 25%. And a, and a, and a lot of uh, a lot of us business owners will 
pay ourselves a modest salary and take the rest of the financial benefit, you know, on our K-1 as a dividend. And she said, this is one of those examples of where you're hurting yourself because none of the K-1 funds, the way that it's currently written, her interpretation would be counted towards, towards your compensation. So you'd be limited to be, to paying yourself what you were historically paying yourself on a whatever period of time you were paying yourself prior to all of this. 2019, I believe, is what she said. Yeah, she did. Okay, let's see. Oh, Leslie's saying she wants to stay on unemployment. She denies quitting, just doesn't want to work now. Okay, that's actually easier. Right, Tom? Yeah. That, that's easier. Staying on now you unemployment when your job's available to you typically is yeah. an option. If presuming that you let the... Uh, Unemployment Security Commission in your state know that uh, she declined your offer to come back to work. And she doesn't have to quit. So I can't remember who gave us this information. One of the experts gave us this information, though, that you give the written, you give the written um, offer of when they have to come back. You give them the terms. It can't be anything less than they were making before. You can't give them less hours, less money, anything like that. If they refuse, then um, just like Tom said, if they don't respond, then you can send them the certified letter. If they refuse and say that they're not coming back, but they don't want to quit, that's fine. You, you might want to just as a nice person to tell them you understand and you have the option. You can either let them go at that point or you can tell them that their job will still be available for them when they're not scared right but but you still have options the the main thing here is you don't have to work this again is like a good position for you to be in because it doesn't affect your fte numbers don't know why i keep doing this i guess because everything keeps changing <laughs> yeah um but your it doesn't affect your she won't go against your fte number and she's also not not hurting you in any way she's she laid it out clearly for you of what what she's doing so hey i don't know that's kind of a win leslie you know it probably doesn't feel like a win i think the big thing here is we got to kind of be careful not to get tied up in our own shoelaces it feels wrong it's like no you can't collect unemployment you're just wanting to take advantage of the system i've got work for you and you're trying to take the government money and do nothing so we're we're making it like we we think they're not right and they're wrong and that might not be your case leslie um but that's what's happening to a lot of us i know we're getting get tied up in our own shoelaces but the law is pretty clear and it's pretty easy about how we move forward and i would say you're actually in a good position your company is anyway uh, we all have to do a gut check and make these decisions based upon you know our own values and how we want to run our company but for when you're trying to sort some of this stuff out at least in my mind if i'm doing what the law is telling me i'm supposed to be doing that's usually a pretty safe place to be and, and there are some people too um on the flip side of that um let's say you have a really great employee that you really love and you know she has high anxiety and you know this is really stressing her out and she just can't work she just really really can't um are there options is there work that you can give her from her home so um maybe or maybe you can just allow her to be on unemployment and then offer her the job when she comes back i don't know i know somebody that's doing that i know somebody that uh, employee said hey um, I think we are not supposed to be open. We're not, we're not considered essential. You're misinterpreting the governor's orders and I'm going to turn you in unless you put me on unemployment. And she was so caught off guard that she said, you know, it just, why don't you just take a, a paid two week vacation? And, you know, we just won't talk about this again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's, I guess that's a that's a strategy. So uh, she was really concerned that all her employees were going to come <laughs> looking for a paid two week vacation, but apparently that didn't happen. <laughs> so 
everybody's doing what they think makes the most sense and how how to make it work for them. So I, I would never have thought of that. That that wouldn't have been my solution, but it seemed to work for her. Yeah. I guess there's a human side of this. I mean, I suspect there are some people that truly have a phobia about being exposed to, to, to a pathogen. Absolutely. You're, you're not going to convince me that, that some people aren't truly afraid because they're, I, I know somebody who I would consider to be a real manly man and he's afraid of pictures of dust mites. You read my mind. I was going to go there, but I wasn't going to go. It's not me. I'm perfectly. <laughs> not tom but i mean people are people are afraid of what they're afraid of it is what it is right look at the people that are afraid of spiders definitely afraid of spiders or you know clowns mice whatever i'm um, okay so we have another question here. i had to do it tom had to uh, um okay okay thanks i thought i had to return oh no you don't have to return your ppp beatrice you're good there yes ui canceled immediately this is also confusing you know what, Beatrice? We're all over that. We agree, and that's why we're on these calls, and that's why we keep bringing on all these experts because we all need the guidance and we all need the help. And you heard Megan yesterday frustrated too, right? She's like, I'm one of the experts, and I don't even know all the stuff. I'm like, yeah. But you know what she does know? She knows that over the next couple of weeks, a lot of what we believe is going to be or is, is going to change substantially. But she's going to have to read, she's going to have to read all those pages again after they've been changed, even though she's read them a dozen times over the last you know, couple of months. Yeah. And she did tell us not to get too, too wedded to this information because it's going to be changing fast. All right. So Debbie has a question here, Tom. I am a sole prop and I don't pay myself. I get unemployment insurance. Can I stay on unemployment insurance if I have PPP? As long as you are taking a paycheck, this falls under the category of, you know, you, you might want to check with your you know, accountant or yeah. even talk to somebody at the unemployment office and just explain your situation and ask for, for, for guidance. I mean, there's, are, are you, are you working? Are you generating revenue? And if so, that, would kind of imply that the Internal Revenue Service would expect you as an owner to be taking some type of compensation in some way if you're actively working in the business, I guess. It would, you know, I guess it just depends upon I, on a lot of details. And if you're using your PPP money on your, and yeah, I don't know, that this one's tricky for me. I feel like it should be easy. Look, it's only two lines and three letters. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it should be easy. It's a trickier one, Debbie. That's, that's a good question, Debbie. I definitely are you, are you shut down. Are you not generating any revenue? Are you not? Are you not working? I guess. I mean, it's oh. possible to have the PPP money sitting over here in a bank yeah, account, yeah, yeah. and you're not working. You're unemployed, so yeah, but you're not using any of that PPP money either. So at the that totally end, makes sense. At the end of you know, now you might wind up going back to work next week and maybe hiring some people, in which case all oh, that's good. But as long as you aren't working and aren't paying yourself anything or you know, having or it, paying you it else money. Yeah. So I guess that depends on the details. Still shut down. Yeah, you're good. Just leave the money in the bank and hopefully yeah. you can open up soon. And if you do, hopefully you still have some weeks left on your window where you can put it to work. Hopefully they extend this. It might end up working out really well for you, Debbie. Might end up working out really, really nicely for you. They might open up right about the same time that they extend the monies for you and you might be able to start spending that. Um, let's see, Linda, it feels weird watching my PPP checking account money slowly disappear. <laughs> Why? I don't want my money to go away. <laughs> right? Spending that PPP money. But doesn't it feel even weirder to be paying all of these people 
and your operations account isn't getting smaller, doesn't that feel weird? If your PPP <laughs> is getting smaller at a slower rate than the monies that are accumulating in your operating account, then that's good. You're making money. Yeah. Now, if your PPP money is going away and you don't have money showing up at greater amounts in your other accounts, then that's you need to, yeah, you got to figure you got to figure out why. But if you're spending that, then you money need to get one of those calculators. Pull up one of those calculators that we keep linking to and fill fill one of those in if that's happening. But I doubt that's happening. Yeah, we need. He's to, a to solid to operator. Figure out what's going on? But uh, if you're if you're spending that money on payroll and the people are that are getting those paychecks or cleaning homes and generating revenue, then odds are pretty good you're making making a lot of money. We okay, that. we're oh, in. Yeah. We're, we're into the five minute warning. Yeah, cleaning business today. Let's show that site, it would be nice. And um, uh, modern cleaning. And so, here we go. Cleaning business today. If you haven't subscribed, it is awesomely easy. If you know your email address and if you know your first name and if you know your last name, and I'm kidding, we all know these things. That's why that's my point. It couldn't be easier. And that's <laughs> free, but you get the newsletters and any other updates that 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 we 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 publish and you know you get updates on all the new articles that are hitting. And we got our super secret coronavirus downloads page that's kind of the secret between us that do smart business moves and the older stuff here is at the top. And this goes back to when we started, when did we start doing, what year did we start doing these Liz? <laughs> yeah, it does feel like it's been a while. We'll, add, and we'll uh, a add a link to that most recent uh, calculator with all the updates in it here. So that'll, that'll be out there tomorrow. Um, yeah. You know what we don't have the updated ppp information from friday do we uh, on there. no we don't um, we the, need to get the guidance yeah i think didn't we God. i don't think so i think that like last wednesday no. was last one here's the one published from the 13th last wednesday yeah yep that's the last one Okay, well, I didn't have anything to do tomorrow anyway, so we'll get all that. <laughs> um, funny, funny, funny. All right, just real quick, Tom, we don't have time today. Two classes, we think all these people on this call all know about it anyway, so sorry yeah. for wasting your time. We just give quick, we really want to make sure that everybody's getting these that can, you guys, the COVID-19 course. It was on Professional House Cleaners again today. Um, Angela asked about it. Um, just because uh, she wants to make sure people are, are taking, you know, are all kind of in the same boat trying to professionalize the industry as fast and during this opportunity, right? This is such a great opportunity for all of us. So COVID-19 on the left and the uh, PHC on the right, uh, professional house cleaner. Uh, that one is, I think, kind of like the um, um, HCT program, um, but designed for for your cleaning professionals versus um, being designed for the owners. That would be the, the big difference there. Okay, yeah. everything's on this page, you guys. Pricing, everything. Oh, oh. Uh, one thing for people that already signed up before, have already done it, good news. We have a new platform, and how it's going to work now is you're going to be in charge of the platform. So you'll be responsible for seeing who getting it out there, making sure that people take it, seeing who took it, who's completed it, all that good stuff. You're going to have complete access, your own little dashboard. I love that. I'm so excited about that. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Make it yeah. more useful. Yeah. All righty, three o'clock straight up. We're good, Tom. I don't, I don't know. Have we ever even done this before? I don't know. But um, it, you know, there's always a chance that somebody could ask us one last question here that would put us into overtime. No, that's the last thing we want. Come on, Tom, let's do it. Okay, guys, we're done. 
Thank you. We will see you tomorrow. tomorrow, five o'clock Eastern. You guys uh, have a good rest of your day. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye y'all.